mix in here with Coach Kaplan after we see the Sentinels win map number one in this riveting best of five kickoff grand final. Coach Kaplan, I heard you uh, mutter something when you walked up here and you said that was easier than I thought. <laughs> this this map was, was so fascinating because it felt like both you and, and Coach Peo took advantage of your timeouts and each time you did, it was your team that would win the next round. Walk us through what you were telling your team each time you would call those timeouts because it felt like it was such a pivotal part in keeping the team uh, in control. Yeah, uh, honestly, we would just, John's flowing with the IGLing today. Uh, Jordan's doing an incredible job helping out with, he's got a lot of good ideas. So a lot of the time we timeout it, I actually basically had a call for the next round. I was like, hey, I like what we're saying in the freeze time. This is sweet. I think after we do this and it works, let's rip this the next round. So uh, they're making it easy for me today so far. Happy face over here from Coach Kaplan. Best of luck on map number two. Thank you. Sentinels start off strong with a 13-9 win on Loud's pick of Sunset. And now they are one step closer to walking away as the kickoff champs. This is going to be, uh, well, a very fascinating uh, BO5 here, guys, because I don't think that Loud... It, it, they, they got something cooking, surely. I have to believe that. Uh, honestly, I'm a little concerned with how he uh, responded, how Kaplan did at the beginning of the evening. Yeah. Ah, that was easier than I thought. They're making it easy on me today. I'm like, bro, but it's still loud. It's like, Sawyer rolled on. Right? Like, easy, <laughs> easy now. But they did look right there. I, I thought that they dealt with the comp that Loud was yeah. running here incredibly well, especially in that first half on the attacking side. This team was looking dominant, especially in the way that they were constantly taking A main control. Zekin getting set up for these really nice double flash with the KO and Gecko Dizzy to double Satchel in, constantly opening up these rounds and just giving John so much to work with in the mid round. I, and I think the dominance that they've showed on Sunset goes all the way back to the offseason. Now 9-1 and one mm -hmm. on this map. They've done it in the offseason. They've done it against different teams. Now they're doing it when the stage is the biggest it's been for them up until this point. Sunset is their map. Yeah, yeah and they're yeah. really proving they as well why that this comp is legit. That yeah. this is a comp yeah. that I think a lot of teams I would expect to replicate because even when teams have VODs out on it, they're still finding success in these retakes. On the attacking side, they're still getting that control that they did. This KO Gecko combo is just so incredibly strong right now. And Sentinels for my money is the team implementing it the we best. We were even yeah. seeing it in the way that they were like constantly going after A main, right? They never really let them have any kind of space, any kind of freedom. I feel like with that composition, it's definitely like what you want to try try and like exemplify here and it worked out quite well for Zekin because my guy was feeding he was having a good time out there feeding. and even though you mean feasting he was feasting fe feasting they feeding. were feeding I mean yeah no 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 well feed but I mean you can still yeah you can still eat anyway point is let's just think about this Zekin was feasting well, Zekin was playing very good yeah. video games Zekin uh, but of course not all that shocking given the hot run that he's on right here Louder definitely gonna need to find a way to shut that down oh I think it's gonna I mean Zekin is my goat Right? And he's just played so I'll well. That phrase. I will. <laughs> he's just played so well. And I think, honestly, on the other side of things, yeah. Tens has two. Right? Yes, like he, true. There's just something about Sunset. He just shows up in a big way. Absolutely. And for Zekin, you saw it there. Six to four in head to head kills against QCK. That's that A main fight that he we different. kept on seeing, that we keep yeah. on talking about, that yeah. is so important to the attack side of this map. Zekin was always winning it. We talk a lot about how good this combo is, how well it sets up the raise player, but you still need a player with impeccable movement who picks the timing with their teammates' utility right on the money and also has the aim to back it up, and that is just Zekin. He's yeah. so consistent on this duelist role, not just because he's an excellent player, but because his team sets him up for success each and every time. Yeah, it really is, you know, like you don't put the I in team. It sounds cringe and really lame, but it's honestly it like, is, but it's true. It is, but it's it's still true. And Zekin exemplifies that 100 percent of course. So this puts Loud a bit on the back foot here. Smix is standing by with the coach of Loud. Let's see what he has to say. Smix here with Coach Peo after uh that loss on that first map. I know we're about to head into split, but I have to ask that map was, even though it ended up being a loss, it felt like it was really close and it, it was without question that Loud continued to play without fear. What are the biggest learnings and what are you going to be doing heading into split? É, mesmo sendo uma derrota, a gente viu que a Loud foi valente no, no mapa e, e buscou a vitória, né? O que, que você acha que vai acontecer agora no split? Eu acho que foi um bom jogo, é, muito mérito da Sentinels também, do que eles estavam fazendo no mapa. Acho que a, gente, a nossa postura foi boa. Agora é split, a gente já ganhou deles uma vez, a gente tem mais ou menos uma ideia do que, que a gente pode fazer agora, do que, que eles estão mudando né, para esse jogo. E a confiança total, que a gente já virou várias séries e vai ser mais uma. 
yeah, we, we did a good job, but he, 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 they were better than us. Uh, but we already played against them on Split, so we are expecting to, to win this one because we know kind of what they do. Amazing to hear that confidence. Best of luck on map number two. Let's not forget the last time, as we heard the coach say, they played. Yes, it was a win. 13-11 in favor of Loud, but does history repeat itself here, Doug? I think it's interesting to hear how he ended that interview when he said, we know how they play. We know what they do. Dog, you knew how they played and you know what they did on Sunset. Yeah. You still lost, right? And you think about how good of a performance Sentinels had on Split, what, 12, uh, 24 hours ago? Not 12 hours ago. That math doesn't add up. <laughs> and they were so dominant on that map. Yeah. Preface, I love Brazil, I love Brazil, I, I love Brazil. Now the point. I think that the win that Loud got on Split last time was off of individual performance sure. and big moments from players. Clutches, rounds that Sentinels should not have lost. Not necessarily an That's excellent fair. game plan in that second half. I think that Sentinels right now is the best team in the world on Split. Their mid-rounding on this map is excellent. Their protocols are on point. They play around the solo initiator beautifully and they have a ridiculous number of looks on how they play the retake. That's the easiest thing to focus on on this defensive side. Sentinels will rip you apart if you let them play their retakes. But I think if TCK continues to struggle going up against Zekin, the long day is only going to get longer. They're only going to have a harder time. If they cannot create space with how tight chokeholds are and how important map control is on split, it's going to be rough. It took Sadaka and TCK having a ridiculous second half to salvage split the last time these two teams played. We need to mm -hmm. see a better game plan against this Sentinel split. No one in my mind, has been able to shut it down yet. Yeah, well, the coach of Loud seems quite confident going into split, but if you are a Sentinels fan, you have to be feeling quite good about Sen's chances. It's time to find out who walks away with the dub. Let's send it back over to your casters, Vansili and Riv. Definitely, the coaching staff of Loud seems to be very confident going into this second yeah. half, but I'm pretty sure Zelsis is also very confident for this match, too, because he talked about it in an interview, in our winner's interview yesterday when they qualified. Like, Loud got a little bit lucky on that one, and I don't think they're going to be able to do that again. So we'll see if they're going to be able to polish things up and not see their heroic plays that Mimi mentioned that Loud brought out for them to capitalize on that second half the last time these two teams met against each other. It was wild. Sadak finished that game the last two rounds with seven kills, a 3K and one, a four, K in the next. Like the chat, like the caster said at the time, they just wanted to end that game. It was over <laughs> and he decided it. I am so excited we get them back on split for the rematch though, because they did test each other. They pushed each other to the max. Sentinels had things that could take Sadak out of vent, yada yada. We get to see it all in play right now. Oh, QCK straight up to vent to start. They are quick. Again, no pun intended. Damn it. You're trying, you're trying. Trying to take control now towards the A tower, and it's a late split for Loud as well. You see both Les and Kowenzin holding passively towards the A main. See no pressure. They can once again take control of A heaven. And a maintaining A heaven control has been in the end of the game on this very map in this meta. Still a player holding towards the back of the site, though. Zelsis is hiding behind the map through two cages, through an orb. A snake bite gives his position away, trying to look for a trap through this trip. But it's Kawazin that breaks it, runs through, one and one. scores first. A one for one, though, as Tens is low on HP. Spike finally going down as Sasi is on that flank on the A main. Less has fallen, so the control on the A heaven is going to be a little bit more difficult, especially when Tui falls. Giving an opportunity for Sentinels to bombard utility. Nades and a flash. Trades off towards the back. Fault line not able to come out as Ten swings from the elbow and Sentinels win a pistol. Sentinels take the pistol. A lot going on in that round. Loud, very confident in their movement. Nice find to be able to get all the way through vents towards A. A heaven and waterfall in. And then comes again the Sen retake. They gather together, able to take out the sides, extremities. And basically everybody meets towards the top side of sight for that flash from Saucy to come in, two from heaven, one screen. But they are patient on that retake. And a big play there as well, insight from Zelsis to be able to even deny those few seconds, allow the B rotation to be a little bit closer so they are in position there. It took them a bit to get Zelsis out of the site. Four war, one four here. Loud will slow work their wall up here towards the vent area, I believe. Saucy says not so quick. A six sense gets the pick. That's the sky down for the attack, but fault line pushes him away. Les, meanwhile, did get an entry to trade it back towards the top of heaven. So Saucy's in a tough spot, but he's been good in this very spot before. 
trying to isolate a 1v1 as Kalidzin <laughs> and his teammates pushes in. Double shot and even a 145 damage. Oh my gosh. Sheriff and oh my name and the snake fight. Good shots good coming now, but the utility is even better for his Sentinels to answer right back. That spike down out in the open, one versus three, but Tuiz does have a Sheriff. Zelsus is low, Zekin is low. This is doable. Sunset deja vu with that nade. Oh my word. And really nicely done, because I'm, I'm sure John Cutie said, somebody's destroying my trips in B. Let's just hit whoever is in sight. So those mollies and grenades, a very high chance to be hitting their target, and that they did. But what can Tuiz do here? Two one shots, and he has to connect with John Cutie twice if it's not the head. And he had a lot of time to work with. A minute on the clock before he made it towards the line of scrimmage of the ace side, but a camera refresh for John Cutie, allowing for them to get ready for a triple swing on a contact. Tui's still looking to move forward. 18 seconds left on the clock. There's that contact. There's one on one end, yep. but was not ready for a second on the top of heaven. You see what these rounds mean though? Yeah, while, uh, while there was the win there, John even wanted to, wanted to drop those weapons. And the win would have been the big W. Sen not letting it happen again, though. Able to pick up that round. Still losing a few members, though. So not too bad. Loud still do some chip damage to that economy. And now we'll see full Vandal buy across the board for them if they can start to take this. <laughs> Wanting more. They're saying, just give me a few more. A few more. They know they need it here against Sentinels. Trail Which is blazer. surprising too that Lound decided to pick the attack side first. Yeah. And Sentinels very strong defensive halves on this map. Screen down. So now they have to try to work something. Getting a plant maybe would have helped them a little bit more in the further rounds, but at least they mm -hmm. still have a gun round now. Third round on the board for split, but Tan's long range with a stinger. Laser beams QCK. Wow. Allows Sentinels to get the power play. It, that was like, uh, oh, they're still going to be. I was going to say, that's a trap play to mid, but it really only needed the, the smoke to drop and tends to be there. They were all ready to back him up, though, if it need be. Now the rotation back to a bit of a 3-2. Yeah, that's something that probably Brendan would say. They have tens. They have tens. <laughs> Then they do. I mean, down. just pushing out with a stinger as well, knowing you're going against the full by round, didn't even phase him. Knows he can hit the headshot, get the aim punch, and finish it, as it were. Paranoia still yeah. there if they want oh. to play the retake more so. Oh, and they no. are going to find A being a little troublesome here as Loud takes the sight. He misses snake bite, so Sassy has down. to fight alone. Finally, Lelsis swings out, doesn't care about being vulnerable. It's a one for one, but the advantage is still for Sentinels. Less than two ease. They've done this before at a disadvantage. The first one to fall is Saucy. Ooh. Almost gets that tap in. One HP. Pain shells once again. Is it a touchdown? But Tens doesn't care. Swings in for the kills with the stinger. First and last two kills of this round. A Sentinels win the bonus. Man, Tens picking up. You're not even you're not even gonna say, oh, he's for the ultimate. No, Tens is just heating up. That's as good as having an ultimate all the time. And he is cleaning up with that stinger. Opening kill on the round, final two kills on the round. Tens is let loose right now. A low buy again for Loud here. And they have not had a good time once they get to the site, Vansili. It seems like Loud needs to figure out a way again to start chip damaging Sentinels before they get to the site. Get this utility out of their hands because the retake is just too strong. Okay, ramp control here for Loud. Just try and pressure, try and get Sentinels to move, dislodge them from the original starting spots. And coming up from the vent, could get a kill here onto Zelsis. Or the drops, and Zelsis goes back up. There's a smoke for him to hide behind the Viper wall. He makes it out of safety, so the timing's out, but at least a stinger through two smokes puts Zelsis down. That's crazy, Vance. Sentinels, oh, nice shot into tens. Yeah, that's crazy. Sentinels are losing players with a buy here from a loud a lower buy that they have finally the anchor towards the back of the site swings for two so that looking to trade it out qck was there two v3 looking for a timing made it through but oh. qck falls a 2v2 40 seconds left on the clock spike is still up so they actually made it managed to take it back and move forward but john cutie's oh, on the top of not allowing loud to leave anywhere else as Rob Moore would say, this kid can frag. <laughs> Holy moly, and he does. Calling the shots, fragging the shots as well. And the interesting thing I wanted to mention about that round, 
Sentinels used that exact strategy to kill Sadak when he had a judge invent the last time they played. So Loud's like, oh, this strat? Let's do it. Four up ramp, one through mid. Zelsis gets out. And Sentinels still find a way to come up with a round, even with a cheeky little trap play there from Loud. Remaining. All right. Loud has been collecting these timeouts once they have <laughs> Rolling Thunder a bit. A few ultimates to use here. How do they procure the W, though, on the next round? Saucy, as much as Sen want to play back, they can again. They're going to have your cabbages going out whenever you want. Seekers are going to find Loud, and they could take 40 seconds into the round. Sentinels will still be comfortable knowing they have the right position. So Loud really trying to figure out what can we do to get Seekers out? How can we work the map so it doesn't affect us? Maybe that audible, maybe the Sadak mid round here going to come into play now that we're back on a full buy and a chance for Loud to get back in. Very reminiscent of Sunset. It's Sen is starting so hot on these maps and Loud is calling an early timeout. Rinse and repeat here, deja vu. Exactly. Money is bought all the way down. Ultimates to work with, full armor. This is a heavy oh, investment for nice Loud this time around and an opportunity to swing it back in their favor. They lose this one here, potentially Sentinels could take a six Absolutely. seconds or a lead. Another handful. Like a snowball for Sentinels. Yeah. Looking how things starts off though, when we look at this Rolling Thunder, they're not really trying to set something quick. Even Spike is dropped, trying to avoid flashes yeah. at the beginning of the round. Wall comes up on the attack, there's no answer for Sentinels. So for Sentinels, they're staying quiet on their positions of where they're trying to hold the a site yeah they have options right they're keeping kawazin in a nice fault line position they can go for ramp if they need to in a bit or they can go for something else we see that fault line coming back off a of cooldown so it wasn't an initial push from sentinels giving safety here to both sadak and less so that's one guiding light one trailblazer now used over towards the right side of this map i think this might activate your b side a little start to walk in they, they just hit the cam. And they pressure on both ends. So they actually didn't even break the cam yet for loud. But it did oh, the that's smoke true. and actually the trailblazer came up. And that's actually quite crazy because not only did the camera didn't break, the trailblazer did not break the trip. But it got pinged out here by Sadak as he dogged up. So loud's going to have to be ready once they start hitting a site. If they want to split towards the A site through this rolling thunder, just get ready so you can break this trip and not get sprayed by Zekin's position. Loud are really trying to get the Seekers out right now, and Saucy is not giving it. Here we go for the Rolling Thunder into the site. It's going to still be the retake from Sens. Oh, the flash in the Seekers does not allow to get QCK's kill on Saucy, but swings out still for that one. Good Second on the top of the A, Heaven Sight to drop spike. two of his own. Spite let it get picked up once again. Nice shot by Les. Whoa, whoa. The second one of the second, turning it around back in favor of Loud. It's only Zelsis by himself. First contact against QCK. And there's that second swing from Tui's. Not hunting wow. down towards the Evans side, but Loud definitely, instead of playing protocols, just won the fight, fight, fight. They had to at that point. I mean, as the clock runs down, you don't get much more room to work. You're going to have to go, and you're going to have to accept that Seekers will find that out. Great push through. Flash and denied by Seekers. Loud still get the ground they need and are finally able to push forward out of the site. Not allow Sen that setup that they've been getting. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Four to one now. Loud feeling good though. Very fortunate for them. Ultimate for QCK, just one away here if they can focus an orb. And definitely a light at the end of the tunnel to start grabbing more rounds. Obviously a buy here for Sen. They had quite a bit of money to go through with those first four rounds. And this is a default we see Loud go to a lot. So set up in this 2-2-1. QCK will now push up towards the vent. Sadak behind. Oh. But they don't have time! What a rage here by Sentinels. Showstopper does not get any kills yet though. We saw the idea out from Loud, but we'll hold that thought for a bit. Paranoia for Loud to try to re-engage for control inside Garage. And finally, as it slows down, you could see it. The trailblazer yeah. came out from Sadak, and he just waited at the corner with this dog up towards middle, hoping to bait the showstopper out yes. towards middle. But then Sentinel's sort of like, hey, no, we're going to take the extremity instead, and almost oh, caught a few off that showstopper. Everybody trying to flip the timing right now. Sadak, oh my gosh. Oh, he's being watched. 
three players are looking back. They knew the orb was coming down. Sadak finally spotted, and he's in heavy trouble. Yeah. Easy digging here for Zekin has gone shooting Zekri towards the back of the site. Cage coming up. Beat bossing around the back here as the rest of his team is able to clean it up from behind. Just cypher walk around there. <laughs> trying to find his hat, trying to find a body. But he just could not. He just couldn't find that note. All right, five to one as we come up on to round seven. Zekin, nine, two, and one. I feel like there has been a lot of showstoppers out of Zekin just this series. Pressuring it. That one from Loud, really well absorbed. Understanding that would go into mid or, or from B main. They could rotate back around to mid. But Sentinels just seem to have the read after the yeah. initial play again. Zekin's been a nuisance towards the top of that A heaven side. And Loud just can't seem to really push him away from that spot. And as they try to go for control towards the A ramp, this time a slight change of pace. Ten's trying to play that aggressive position up towards the A ramp. Doesn't even care about the satchels. And Kusuke falls as well. So you see, sometimes it's aggressive from Loud, sometimes it's slow on the A ramp. And yeah. even the positioning is well read from how Sentinels want to play it. Zekin's all, uh, Tens and Zekin known for anchoring quite well on that A Heaven side. Cover going out. Already. Loud working numbers down here. Sentinels is not making anything easy for Loud. I think this is what we see from Sen, right? If we had Tens on bind, they'd be pushing extremities everywhere. The Sen comp for split means they stay back. They crowd together, they retake together. Being able to flip styles and identities like that, I think, makes Sentinels so strong. And hard for teams to read that aggression. Oh, the trip across too oh easy for Saucy. Down A. Saw the idea there, and that late lurk. 30 seconds Not gonna do too much. Okay, uh, at least that kill onto John Cutie winning that fight. Rare moment there for the IGL of Sentinel sign. You definitely see here with 18 seconds left. Phantom in hand. So just gonna try to save it. But the idea for Lao was trying to go yeah. for just Ten basic utility, left. hit that A side. The one pesky trip, not breaking that utility from the Don Cutie side on that A site, allowing the anchor player of Saucy so good back of site, flower pots. Yeah. Hell, like he's so good uh, in all of these rounds that we've seen Sentinels play their defensive side on split so far. If we think back just to the, the round Zach and blasted into B main, we were almost about to talk to about Loud setting up their default again, right? Partially through the round, Loud want to set up a default. It's kind of telling to just look at that scenario and say, Sentinels doesn't want Loud to do default anything. They're not giving Loud time to default anything or the get the benefit remaining. of defaulting anything. They are really messing with how Loud approaches the game here. One of them is just staying back, staying safe, and making the retake that much stronger. So Loud try to put the game in their hands. One of our first fast blast packs up here. That was facilitated by Colin Zine's breach fault line. Staying alert, staying safe, and that's what they need. Swing towards heaven. Even though you had the same type of conditioning that it's Zekin yeah. out there outside that window of the A side. This time it was Tens trying to hold it out, but you saw the crosshair placement from Loud side. Instant entry and advantage for the attack. Slow play, denial, delay right now coming in. Just so Loud can't complete the strategy they want, but they're also happy to see some of this util from Sentinels lessening the power that they're going to have to deal with as they enter a site looks like it might be a commit to b oh no okay we see colin zine start trolling down the sewers and the rotation back over yeah they're definitely gambling this rotate back towards that b side seekers coming out just yeah. to keep those players anchored inside b that's going to make it difficult for zelsis couldn't find any surprise kills no trap coming across on this b side holds He's gonna say potentially they're gonna try to save their weapons here, but look at that yeah. instant rotate back from Sentinels. 27 seconds left. And Zelsis is trying I to find planted. a timing. Down. This is it. They crowd together. All the power in one spot from screens. They still have a dog and a flash, so that's gonna help them get information. They're already preemptive utility the delay. used by Loud for the pulse plant. There's the Yachtashaw coming through, forcing a dog to fall back. Yep. There's that flash to swing out, and QCG gets the first pick. That's and it's definitely it. gonna be for the last minute. <laughs> It's kind of like you first. Never mind. No. <laughs> we don't want any of that. Loud. What a quick round by them. But let's look at how they took it. It is one of theirs. 
A spray from last, that opens up. That's a 5v4 that's legit. Another spray coming through the smoke isn't something you can replicate, but the speed Loud took on that round is what kind of gets Sentinels off kilter there. Loud can do that again. So definitely seeing that speed is playing to their favor. QCK is going to have ultimate after this. So off the rip, we might get it again from Loud. And I think that's the way they should go. And I, I love that slight adjustment from Loud. A symbol just pushed towards that window side because when you're looking at where the anchor player towards the A side, usually Sasi, yep. is just waiting towards the back of the map, playing behind the trip. So you don't really have too much presence on screens or elbows. So they just want to gamble it there when the wall comes down for Loud to get the pick and the gamble pays off. For Sentinels, are you going to try to readjust on this? And it starts off early. I mean, Sasi's already at the entrance here looking to potentially flash for info. So knock comes out for the first time too, and we talked yeah. about that that line of sight, right? And look at tense. Instead of being towards the E he's opting out exactly. down the straight line from screens towards the entrance of that A site. There's a check, making sure the Viper wall that just went up and down from less did not provide any movement. A one, three, one. A lot of options for loud here. They can actually call any audible they want. A very flowing strat to go through vent or be main here, or uh, mail rather. And Mel has a lot of utility to looking to get that showstopper out for control oh, denied right away. What? Oh, gets two. What? That was like Second a second from the grave. Is insane. What? One straight bullet probably before he fell down. Seriously, yeah. Boom, that's two down and already the pit out on the defense. Daldos, Loud is still trying to commit into this. Spike is still up on the back of Sadak. Zels is holding behind here, the double box. Trying to wrap around, waiting for the tap of the spike. Three players just trying to clear out the pit and it never checked that corner. So everybody's dwindling down on HP. Left. Now the plant comes down. Zelsa still holds it, giving a chance here for Sentinels to the roll lurk. across. Even the hat comes out. There's that kill from Zelsa. They spot the last two players. The lurk is not even going to work. Last one now pinged out. Two E's on the top of B Heaven. The flash, the swing. The defuse is starting, and the kill comes in for John Cutie. In a, Seven to two. A round you can chalk up to New Jersey's finest. Oh, what a double kill from heaven. Second season has been unreal right now. They talked about him on the desk in between game one and two. He has been putting up numbers, but also you put him in situations where you should see a player going down with no kills. He'll come up with two. He'll come up with the unreal play and it's just wearing away at loud that they can't get past this kind of stuff right now flick of the day flick of the day you would bring it back for something like that honestly operator still there sentinels feeling very much in control of this game receiving each one of loud strats so far so what is next two ease gets the op we got double omen operator on the map right now less with the alt if they can gain ground into a site and maybe even try to flex with it to put it down first. And that's rare too. Usually it's used on the defensive Whoa. side for QCK and Tui's makes that work though. Once again, a high gamble that pays off for a power play for Loud. But they still have to go some through some yeah. heavy, heavy firepower of Sentinels here. But Tens is alone towards the A side, only has that off to work with. A push down from Zelsis. So we're trying to go for, again, those Boys one and duns. Hoping to get two. Hoping to get information as well. I think he gets a mid lurk. They go all the way around. Loud is being too. very safe here. I think Zelsis just turned, so he might have heard him across. Got that little step. Yeah. If they make any noise on ramp, he'll know. There you go. Allows Tens to Spike inch out a little bit more. Get that pick. Zekin to join him towards the back of the side. There's a second shot there. And he's been good in this position as well. Paranoia on both ends, not allowing the push forward. A TP backwards as well. But then finally, Kuziki and Les comes in. They trade it out. Two versus two. Zels is too far to throw the snake fights down to deny the plant. John Q to meet up with him as a yes. Les gets the ult out to control the elbow and both moving towards the screen. That's a wild amount of ultimate right there. Pushed out a bit because of the column. Giving him much more room to play with here. What, all, what do they have too? They could Viper bite elbow and try to make their way in watching just the entrance to site from the uh, top side here. But that boom bot gives a clue here. Oh, that players are coming across the wall bang after. But the second one is nowhere to be found. Silly. Just sticking the spike right now and Celsius will get the defuse.
At the beginning of this map, we said Sentinels somehow gets these insight sticks on the defuse. They take the site with members of the uh, opposing team still alive to force them out of their position where they feel safe. That was out of the ultimate. And I think Loud also predicted they might find some utility at elbow. Both swing out middle sight, and that's all they wrote. Sentinels stick the defuse again. It's becoming all too common. And they get the round eight to two now for Sentinels. It's not the same comeback that Sunset had for Loud. That's for sure. I feel that there's a moment of pressure there for Loud too on that 2v2. Ouch. Well, hold Ouch. On. Oh, it's a beautiful fall. And Celsus, once again, using Incredible. and that the fault line is cosmetics. Two CK falls for this heavy pressure that Loud is trying to get towards middle. Sentinels are crunching back in, looking to fight back. Sadak is stuck behind the box. The Satchel's coming out. Celsus with a jump kill. Doesn't care. Torques away. Sentinels is not allowing Loud to play the game right now. Continuously pushing up, finding their own fights. Pushing Loud out of their own strategies constantly. Here to reset, try again, less. Mechanically gifted, ready to open up on any members that peak, but Sentinels stay hunkered down, trading each other and ready on these hard angles. Look at even all the way out of A. At this point, usually you have members anchored in sight, but they're not giving Loud any opportunities. Exactly. They got active information. The camera's watching everything from A main yep. and also towards heaven. They just flashed towards the garage as well, coming out from Saucy. So now the only the only positions that they could think of is. 30 Mid seconds left. Vents or rotate back towards A main, yeah. holding outside of the radius of that camera. It's not going to be easy for allowed to take a position, so you already see it still anchoring up now towards the middle. Yeah, this or is a save. Or giving up this round, yeah. Save for sure. Knowing the ultimates are there, Zekin could easily just pop in. Seems like he has alts on rerun right now. Just more in his pocket once he uses left. it. And go which, ahead. And which, sorry, gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit about that pressure I was talking about. And, falling on those slight oh. mistakes. It was a 2v2 where they boom bought outside of their own pit to get their positions yeah. away. And that's something that they're gonna have to clean up here if they wanna play against a Sentinels that looks so polished this kickoff and this year and this season of the BCT Americas. I don't think we've really, I, we've seen it before, but it's uncommon to see a team be able to play to their win condition so much and not have it affected really at all by their opponent. If they're able to, to switch something so slightly and it, it keeps the flow going. Look at that, that's Mance. Mance getting a head scratch right there. It's a cute cat. All right, there's some lore for you as we get back into the game. Final round here, can Loud pick up a third one and stave off? A quick two rounds or three if Sen can grab pistol the second half. A rare, explode? Exactly, a rare full out explosion towards the piece. Yeah. Sentinel's just holding back, using the camera, looking to pressure up, trap towards the male instead. There. Plant coming down for B main. Seekers out as well. Instant retake attempt. QCK surprises one, but second comes out with a showstopper. Following the Seekers gets denied. Less is out towards the pillar, gets a pick. Look at that TP for the oh flank from gosh. Tunes as well. Things are looking good here for Loud on the Pulse Plant. A high-low stack now towards the dumpster. Paranoia and Flash coming through. The high-low is good for that first pick. Ken's looking to trade it back. Looking left and right. Through the, the Viper work to get the pick. But John Cutie now in a clutch situation. Remember that TP I talked about before? Not even needed this time around. Kaozin winning his 1v1, allowing the half <laughs> to finish 9-3. They Switching finally sides. get that third round, and it, again, it is a huge one. Sentinels had the read the whole time. It took Loud everything they had in the tank to get these rounds, to hold the site, to get themselves to victory there. And we could see just in the final rounds how Sentinels would make Loud work for it over and over. We're not seeing Loud dive in off the back of QCK, and Sentinels know that. QCK isn't getting these huge blasts, and it requires the team and it's been tough for them. When I know that we have loud fans are allowed in the back, but you know who's louder than that? Smix with Mama and Grandma Zekin. Thank you very much, Ben Silly. I am so lucky to be standing here with two superwomen who are responsible for our superstar duelist on the Sentinels in Zekin. To my left, I have Grandma Zekin, and to my right, I have Mama Zekin. Grandma Zekin, it's such a pleasure to have you here. It's my pleasure. 
Oscar. It's my pleasure to support the two unbelievable team, the two, the Loud and Sentinel. They are good. <laughs> this has been such an amazing match. How, how cool is it for you to not only see the team perform so well, and of course, not only see Zekin do so well, but to also see so many fans in the audience that have your a grandson's face on the signs, his name? Maybe I'm the oldest audience here <laughs> because uh, I think that Zachary, at the age of three, I'm playing with him. We, the, the bowling, the tennis and everything. <laughs> yep. And then the, what's it, the other one, the... Uh, Ma Minecraft and everything. Po Pokemon. So you heard it here first. If you want to have a superstar grandson, play games with them at the starting the age of three. Mama Zekin, before we let you guys go, I, I heard you talking about how important this game means, not just, again, for your son, but of course, for the Sentinels to make it to the fir to their first global event in years. What would it mean for you to see them make it? Um, we're very proud of Sentinels and the whole North America. For me, we love Sentinels since day one, all the fans. Let's go USA! Woo! Let's go USA! Vincelli and Riff, back to you guys. Of course, gonna let that breathe a bit. Yeah. Of course, starting those chants. <laughs> the fans behind Sentinels, and yeah, I'm probably gonna get those games too with minivans so that I could see him play just like Zekin now. But absolutely. Speaking of him, 12 and 6 so far. The spray transfer Ooh. that we saw that was sick on that first half when they were playing against the showstopper of QCK on that opener. Sentinels taking the lead now by six, taking the attack side of split, where Loud still also has a pretty decent split side on defense. An opportunity to fight back, and the fight starts for mid control. Look at this wall. Loud's put up, the Sentinels will have to weave through a bit if they do want to take uh, a B male control. Jump peaks to come through. Yeah, Sadak would love to save those guiding lights and trailblazers. Yeah, Sentinel wins that one. Wins that one rather. QCK and Sadak low on NHP, and even Sentinels resetting in the mid round, pivoting towards this A side, but still having a couple of players lurking towards B. Yeah, smoke delay just came coming out of two E's there. He's going to take a ramp control just for now, and this is going to give Loud the thought that they can rotate over towards that B side. If Celsius can sell this, oh, okay, the noise is already there from A. Yeah, that trailblazer comes up trying to find a timing as Tui's is spamming with his ghost through that smoke. Good rotation Try to catch from Loud. Reload, yeah. The dog finds information towards B main, but there's a beautiful flash for our double swing. And it looked beautiful as a rotate for Loud. They were looking for the pressure towards middle as well. And mm -hmm. we mentioned two lurkers on Sentinel sign. John Cootie punishing that push from Loud. Already a five on three. As the Satchels comes in and will have a secured plant for Sentinels in the second pistol of split. Ooh. Tough entry there. You'll get uh, Sadak back over. No utility to get back in this one. So it's just going to be the three members to help with a fault line. Yeah. Five of Sentinel. So a quick take by Sen with a little bit of pressure around the map, knowing what rotations might be coming through and just playing this wall a little bit. And that small pressure that you mentioned, that you mentioned rather, towards that B side, yeah. kept Sadak the whole round pretty much. It's a great it took point. a couple of seconds before he actually rotated back with the rest of the team to move in this A side for the attempt of the retake that will get fully denied by Sentinels, only losing Saucy in the process. Yep. Pulling those members to anchor the site longer than they need to. Sentinels seem to have such a read on what Loud does right now. See what happens. The sheriff here for less. Feeling pretty good with a bit of that money as we watch the replay. Just combined retake. Get back into their spike. And Sentinels find that first round. So Loud did grab three. It kind of takes the pressure off of losing that pistol, but it never feels good to not get the start. Two Buckies going in for Loud here, trying to play it close to the chest and hopefully get some of these angles right on top of Sentinels. They're going to work the wall still with a bit of hesitation on the left side of the map to see if Loud yeah. wants to push. You've been and, pinging it out. Yeah, that's going to be one of their big things coming into the, into the gun rounds if Loud cannot get extremity control. And this is where you start understanding on, the play out. style of Loud. Lower buys that they have, they usually have shotguns to work with. This time, two Buckies for Kalazin and Sadak. So as soon as the fault line came out, instant wall, instant camera, just to try to spot players mm -hmm. running through. 
And as nothing really happens, they're playing around this map, around the A site. It really kind of leaves Kaladzin pinned here in this position. So then the pressure comes back towards Les. The trailers are now fought. Spots Kaladzin, who goes for another fall line. The long range there oh. finally connects. Oh! To take down, take down Zekin. There is that bait allowing oh, yeah. Les to just swing out from the back of the map. Beautifully done for the crossfire set up for Loud. It was looking pretty good for Sentinel so far, but somehow the Rohoric place comes out. 2v2. Juicy came to ease only with pistols. A plant for heaven. Both players though falling back in the back of the east site. Two flashes still available for Saucy. This still a pretty good position now for the attack pulse plant. What a second round. Are they really going to steal this away? Not at this point. No. Only it just dwindled. Paranoia though. Might have an opportunity to isolate one, but it's a double swing right after. Nice little beat here, allowing to get the kill and at least stop the pressure that loud was almost converting there on yeah. the 50. That got sketchy. And Sentinel's buys will still be pretty sketchy coming into this round. Do those frags from Loud. But it, Loud needs to start securing the rounds. They're not really even able to salt, cycle alts like we see Sentinels doing on their rounds. So the advantages aren't also coming from those factors. It is just tough for Loud to find a way in. This gun round, however, could start that momentum. I think it was telling all the games that Grandma Zekin was talking about here. Yeah, so yeah. The next Zekin. Yeah. I mean, he was doing jump map before this too, just getting the vibe, getting his movement down. We know Zekin's movement is one of the prime things he's known for. So, always doing that. Here he goes. No satchels behind oh, the, oh. Seat, the flash though. <laughs> Zekin couldn't get that kill, but there is that Sadak judge. Avoids it. But you saw the stun turning wow. back. So it's a fake to turn around and actually stun him to get the kill. Beautifully done by Sentinels. Chewie's now out in the open. Second is Where's the one the across with his own judge. Opening up the B site. A plant for main. Tens on the boxes, looking towards the spawn. There's only less so far. As his other teammates, it feels like they're leaving him for dead. They're still holding towards middle and A main as Tens picks up the kill. Just, it's an absolute masterclass right now from Sentinels across these two maps. Looking, they well, the way they took mail. Let's just think about that. The Trailblazer goes through, and you think it's a Vandal that would verse a Judge, but no, Tens gets a Guardian kill on the Judge that's waiting that did not even get stunned. Like, that is crazy. The things you think should fall to the wayside for Sen are going in their favor because they're all behind each other on these calls, and they are making it work as a team. An incredible team coming into the season. Important kills to save now for QCK and Kawadzin, where John Cutie is moving forward with his teammates. Putting the camera up, spawning that raise, and there's that pinch from the other side too. At towards the ropes. One to fall, and the second one stays alive. So at least they kept a stronger weapon alive. That's QCK, the duelist with the Vandal. But it's still map point though, nonetheless, for Sentinels. Map point with Icebox in the mix next see this play once again just after talking about how Zekin is vibing is feeling it he gets a nice jump and drift in there into B site to open it up with the judge they have so many options so many variables I don't think we've really seen the same round from Sen here on attack as they've been moving from that 9-3 score line You're hoping to get something done here with that Vandal from QCK, the force by, of course, coming through for Loud. So mm -hmm. the two strongest weapons is two Vandals to work with. But it's spread thin here on the defense. Thin also on utility with 115 left on the clock. Here. There's no paranoia. Only one flash left from Sadak. Thankfully, Kalazin is still there to support towards the A side with his own flashes and breach utility. So all they're trying to do right now on the A side yeah. is trying to delay with that util yeah. and go for the crossfire setup on the top of mid. It makes sense. I mean, use your fault line to get it back. Create an opportunity with it the first time. And they try to get a quick peek towards mid. So Cowan Zine relying on that to be back and probably timing it just right that they'll have this A hold as they get over to the right side of the map. It is going to be the lurk from Saucy. This vent lurk again we keep seeing in the 1-4 and it becomes such a big kingpin for the round. Saucy fakes towards B main. Seekers are out and they're going to start moving 30 here. seconds left. 
There it is. Oh, absolutely ridiculous. They're so far behind enemy lines. Loud doesn't even know. Just because of that pick that allows that pick to happen for a second on the as one was falling back. Now players are falling down towards the A side. Count Zinalo, Guardian cannot hold, cannot hold the doors. There's only one left, two East. B site, Guardian as well. No flash as we mentioned. Sentinels a full roster on the post plant. It's looking like a done deal. He's even walking the whole time. They've respected Sentinel so much on these lurks, on these, off these post plants. Just uh, probably look to pad some stats up here. There's yeah. that first one. Ten's low HP. And there's that swing out. Finally getting that last pick. Sentinels one map away of winning the kickoff here in Americas. They would love those points. Right now, they are racking them up from round to round. Every member participating here from Sentinels to keep it going. And we're going to be going to Icebox next, Fan Silly. Something we have don't have too much footage there for Sentinels, since they're the ones who usually banned it or have previously banned it too and haven't had to see themselves on it. Yeah. I actually spoke to Kaplan and Drew. They're like, we didn't sleep too much. We still want to prepare to try to win this one as well yep. against Loud. We have some team, we have some footage. So I'm looking forward to see what Sentinels has cooking up. But Loud, hopefully here, is looking to cool down Sentinels. Amazing performance on Icebox. And that's coming up next. You okay? No. I live with a broken phone. I can't trade in. Okay, that's dramatic. Better plans for Ryzen. Everyone can trade in their old phone and get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with AI on them. A new phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Wait, I'm on Verizon. Can I still get it? Yeah. I gotta trade this in, right? New and existing customers can trade in any Samsung phone for a new Galaxy S24 Plus watch and tablet, all on us. That's up to $1,800 in value, only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings.